change after half time. You made a treble change pretty early, so yeah, which yeah, suggests right. you weren't entirely happy. All yeah, right, ten minutes, yeah, ten two minutes was was like that, and after. <laughs> He's rattled. I love. Listen, Pep Guardiola is a goat. He's a genius, but I love when he's broken. It's equal, and we had uh, also our moments, and it's not easy because defense is in the back. And but yeah, in general, in general, we we was a tight game. So and at the end, we have the chances we can do it, and unfortunately, they did it. He didn't have any chances. He, he had no chances in the second half. He didn't do anything, Pep. What did you make of your play? In attacking areas, just that that final third. I think there's one shot on target today. Yeah, not much. I don't know how much they had and shoots on target. So, but they not didn't... many either. Huh? No. Well, they they had four times more than Man City. They were by far the better attacking team. It's mad how the media are even playing it down to Pep's face. Their three games on the bounce domestically, they have lost. Yes, Arsenal were pragmatic at times yesterday to ensure they didn't leave themselves holes. But in the previous two games, City have had an abundance of chances and not scored. If this was any other team, they'd be talking about a lack of creativity. They would be questioning the strikers and the attackers for not scoring. And we know how brilliant Haaland is. We know how brilliant Alvarez is. We know how good they all are. That doesn't mean three domestic games on the bounce without a win struggling to score goals and yet they're just lying not many either yeah, that, that, that's the point that's the point so they have our momentum they have our momentum the rest was equal and at the end one action they, they won so you see one action they won it wasn't an equal game it wasn't an equal game you had one shot on target in the opening minute and did nothing else the first time ever harland 0.00 xg meaning he did not have an opportunity to score. Your attackers were pocketed. Your treble-winning team, who hasn't lost the eight years to Arsenal, were outclassed. And people don't like me saying that. How can you say they were outclassed? They weren't battering the door down. Both teams defended very well. That's the only element City can praise themselves in. They got to a point in the game, City, where they were too afraid. They were too broken by Arsenal yesterday to open up an attack because they knew what was going to happen in the transition and on the counter. And look, Pep, you can see it in Pep's face. Look at the anger. Look at the frustration in this man. Blah, 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 blah. Seeing a derby between them, which was a belting game. Feelings in the comments section below. Let it go, let it go. The big fella up front, Ali at all. For Haaland, he never, he never really, he hardly got kicked, to be honest. He just didn't see enough of the ball. And they just... For the first time, and I, I honestly, I can't remember the last time I've said I've seen a City team play without really creating much, because usually they just create so much. And, and Andy Townsend is right here, and Arsenal need the credit for this, and they're not getting as much of it as I think they deserve. I would want Man United credited. Spurs fans would want their credit. Liverpool, Liverpool, Chelsea, etc. Four attempts on goal, the lowest since 2010. That is how good that was. From Arsenal yesterday, you know, I keep reiterating they outclassed them yesterday. They nullified them, and they did it in a way that you probably have to do against City, trying to blow them off the park, play expansive, open attacking football. You're going to lose. You ha you're going to lose. You're going to lose because they've got more firepower, more knockout ability, more strength in depth. You have to do it a different way. You have to have a different strategy. And they got it perfect yesterday. They really, really did. And R Robbie's reacted to this here. And I, I want to get your views on what Robbie has said with this massive fallout to this game. Fantastic win, you know, um, and psychologically, you know, it's huge. You know, we haven't beaten City for so long, I think since 2015. And they always seem to turn us over. I mean, to be fair to them, they beat us home and away last season and then won the league. So we really needed to get that victory against them. And um, I thought we were fully deserved of our win yesterday. We, we sort of played in a different style. We, we, we limited their chances. I mean, Erling Haaland, I've never seen him so quiet in a game. It was unbelievable how... Yeah, by the way, I had to take him off the screen there because there was footage from the game and we'll get a copyright strike. And Robbie, Robbie's right about one thing, the psychological edge. 
this is how we're going to break City. Last year, Liverpool, Arsenal were close to it. There was bans that they put in place as a club. They wouldn't sell them their players anymore. There was rattled supporters. And then just at the, the, the back end of the season, they had to play them twice because the game early in the campaign was cancelled due to the Queen's passing. And those two defeats to City gave Pep's team that psychological edge again. They went on and won the title. They went on and won a treble. Getting this win now from an Arsenal point of view is absolutely massive. And as I say, you break this down, Pep rattled. The City players not preparing for this game, not doing their research, arrogance of them to do that. The lack of attacking threat, the amount of chances that they didn't create and or opportunities they've not converted in the last three domestic games. Yes, Rodri's missing, but that isn't an excuse. Look at the abundance of talent they have in that team that could come into the side and play and replace him. And in other games, they've created the chances. You look at all of that, and as I said, the bitterness there from Pep. Of Arsenal, have they broken Manchester City? Give me your thoughts and give me your feelings. Hit the like and the share button. Let's keep, we've got more coming for you, but let's take a look. Damn! You know, because I just don't think, if you get all their players in, half of them don't know the laws of the game's full stop, as you can tell by what you've just said about restarting the game for the sake of it. So play people For the do, sake of it? Yeah, well, for well, the you, sake of it! But you don't know. This was on Sky, and they're talking about the the Liverpool Tottenham situation and for the for the back for the background Paul Merson has basically said that they should stop the game even if it's outside the law um so they can make the right decision. You mean the sake of no. it you're playing Liverpool no. against Tottenham you don't know one the of law. the biggest games you're you saying the for the sake of it but you don't know the law come on do you know do you know no, the law? there's no law <laughs> there's yes. no one's gonna die yes, to stop the game no but one's gonna happen but you're all scared you're all you're all scared, you're all you're all scared. scared. You're all Stop the game! Oh, Stop the, the game and then take Burst. the circumstances. It's the law, Burst, it's the law seriously. Not, calm down. It's the law, mate. Seriously. Calm down. It's the it's law. not played. Why are you saying calm down? This is great content. I haven't watched this kind of Sky content in a while. Okay. It's a law, Typical. mate. That is the law. Because you, 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 you know the rules, that's different. You can't no. change the law. It's See, it's, it's, no. You can't change the law. This is the problem with referees. I understand they couldn't stop the game again because of the protocol. But the consequence of not breaking that law were worse than breaking it. This isn't, by the way, criminal law. I understand that solicitors and the police, of course, and everybody else, CPS, they have to follow the law, or they're meant to. Otherwise, you can jeopardize a case, and somebody that's guilty can get off because the law hasn't been followed. But this isn't criminal law. This is football. Do you know what? I know that's the law, but in this circumstance, I'm going to step outside of it. I'm going to step outside the law to ensure the right decision is made. You're not going to get punished. You're not going to be reprimanded. In fact, football fans will think you're brilliant for that. It was a great argument to see, but it demonstrates the problem with referees. They're not managing the situations. Well, the letter of the law, I can't do that. But how about the letter of the law yesterday when Bruno Gamares and Kovacic should have both been sent off for at least double yellows? Why did you not follow the law then? Or oh, subjective nonsense. Nonsense. There isn't a person on earth that can't see that they're two yellow cards. Yes, you could argue it's subjective, but it was so blatant, it becomes an objective element. Crazy. It's genuinely crazy to watch this. How dare you? It's failing. You sort of end up not knowing who's 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 the good guys and who the bad guys are. You end up calling the ones who've been there a long time. And they've got some good lads who've come in and been bought into the club. They've got some good lads who've come through the ranks. The big question mark always is at the moment, the stability that runs right through the club. And it's not there. And I don't think Manchester United will finish in the top five this season. I just don't. I, I, I think they're way off it. And I'm, I'm surprised because seven or eight weeks ago, I had them third. It pains me to say it. It pains me to say it. But right now, Gary Neville is right. I had United coming third. I thought there'd be a much a marked improvement from us this season. So far, the manager has made horrendous mistakes. Certain players like Bruno, Rashford, Casemiro have not continued their brilliant form from last season. Onana has come in and the pressure is... He's been space jammed. He, his ability is gone. Yes, there's been horrendous amount of injuries. We have, we've had nearly all our fullbacks barring one out for like a month now. 
and hopefully after the international break, the Shores and the AWBs and the Regulons will be back. Hopefully we have more options um, in all of those areas and it enables us to play the midfield that the manager wants. But as things stand right now with the quality of the Liverpools, the Arsenals, the Tottenham's, Newcastle's Brighton's away, they've all began. Man United are up against it to make it into the Champions League again next year. Fortunately for them in the last couple of weekends, a number of teams above them have also dropped points. So from a points point of view, they're not a million miles away. But I agree, as it stands right now, this is looking peak for Man United. But I do want to get your opinions. I do want to get your views on this in the comment section below, people. Until next time, take care. Goodbye. God bless. And I'll see you all again.